I guess, I mean, that's actually a really good example because that kind of leads into what I've always been fascinated by a lot of what you're doing is, well, I, I guess I, well, I'll start with, how did you get into this? I mean, you know. Into cars? Uh, into cars, into taking over NASA, into, well, not taking over NASA, right. no, uh, 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 being a contractor <laughs> for, for, for NASA. For the record, we're yes, not yes. taking over NASA. You're not taking over NASA, they're an independent organization. The, the, but yes, you all are exactly. a, a becoming a major uh, a provider of services for NASA, um, obviously uh, kind of internet payments and payments generally. I mean, these are very three completely different spaces. I think a lot of people would not take someone seriously if they kind of had a business plan in one of these. Right. What, oh yeah, you take, take your time. Um, what, what was your, I, I mean, were, were, did you always think you were going to be doing this? Or <laughs> when did it dawn on you that, that you would try to revolutionize three industries? Well, um, when I was in college, I, I didn't actually expect to do it. So mm -hmm. it was not like this is some long fulfilled expectation. But, but when I was in, in college, I thought about what, what are the areas that would most affect the future of humanity, in my opinion. Um, and the three areas were the internet, sustainable energy, and space exploration, particularly if humanity becomes a multi-planet species. You know, there's kind of like a pretty substantial bifurcation in our sort of future if we're either uh, out there among the stars on multiple planets or if we're confined to Earth until some, obviously, eventual extinction event. Yeah. Um, not that I'm pessimistic about life on Earth. I mean, I think some things are likely to be good. But even more likely to be good yeah. by far. Yellowstone's due for an explosion every hundred, several hundred right, exactly. thousand. Right, exactly. knows about that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Every seven thousand years. Every seven. It's been seven hundred thousand since. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Super I mean, volcano. For those of you who don't know, it would envelop. But well. Sorry. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. So. So. We read I mean, the same books. I can right. tell. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I mean, something bad is is bound to happen if you give if you give it enough time. Um, and civilization has been around for such a very short period of time that um, you know th these these time scales seem like very long, but on a evolutionary time scale they're very short. Yeah. Um, you know, a million years on evolutionary time scale is, is really not much, um, and you know it's been around for four and a half billion years. Yeah. So that's you know a very tiny, tiny amount of time, really. But for us, that would be. I mean, can you imagine if? if uh, human civilization continued at anything remotely like the current pace of technology advancement for a million years, where would we be? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think we're either extinct or on a lot of planets. Yes, we should. <laughs> those, and, those are the two options. And, and, but, but given that, I mean, one, that's, that's kind of as epic as one can think about things, I mean, literally. Uh, I mean, how, how did you make that concrete? How does that turn into SpaceX, Tesla, and, and PayPal? Mm. Well, so I thought about those th these things kind of in the abstract, um, not, not from the expectation that I would actually have careers in those arenas. But, um, but I, I wanted to be involved in at least one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and at first, I thought the best bet was going to be electric cars. Yeah. And so the area of that I was studying was that, um, advanced capacitors. Right? So essentially, capacitors that have an energy density um, exceeding that of batteries. Because they have a very high power density, but but low energy density. Yeah. So we may have a lecture to that. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. No, we <laughs> should do that. I'm, no, that's, we'll get it later. But yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, obviously, if you, if you could make a capacitor that had anywhere near the energy density of a battery, and, and with an incredibly high power density and its quasi-infinite cycle and calendar life, then you would have a, an awesome solution for energy storage in mobile applications. Yeah. Um, so that, that I was going to sort of work on that and try to uh, leverage um, the equipment that was developed for advanced chip making and photonics uh, to um, create uh, uh, ultra precise capacitors at sort of at the molecular And this is when level. you were going to go into uh, grad school? Yeah, you, you, exactly. you, you had a brief stint at Stanford. That's right. Yeah. At, for, at a PhD in applied physics? Uh, applied physics and material science. Right. Yeah. This is what you were, so science, even yeah. then you were thinking of kind of trying yeah, to yeah, do exactly. something in the space. Well, uh, well, actually this was, yeah, this was to, to work on energy storage solutions for electric cars. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and I'd actually worked at a company in Silicon Valley called Pinnacle Research, which did advanced um, capacitors. They were, they were um, electrolytic uh, c capacitors, mm -hmm. sort of, um, and, uh, th but the problem, and, and they actually were pretty good. They had like the energy density of a lead acid battery, mm -hmm. um, which for a capacitor is, that's a big deal. Um, but they used uh, ruthenium tantalum uh, oxide. And there's a, I think at the time, there was maybe like one or two tons of ruthenium mined per year in the I world. See. So it's not a scalable solution. Yeah. Um, but there, I thought there could be some solid state solution 
like just like you know, say using chip making equipment. That was going to be the basic idea, but it was one of those things where I wasn't sure if success was one of the possible outcomes. <laughs> um, you know, and <laughs> like you can't, it's difficult to bound that problem exactly and say, okay. So you're saying I wasn't? I felt like this was a destined failure. Is no, another no. way to parse that sentence. But anyway, so um, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it would would, yeah. would fail, but yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure that success was a possibility. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, and, and generally, you want to embark on something. It's desirable yeah. to figure out if success is, is at least one of the possibilities. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> for sure, failure is one of the possibilities. Yes. Um, but but ideally, you want to try to bracket it and say success is in the envelope of outcomes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wasn't quite sure if that was the case. Um, I mean, I think success on an academic level would have been quite likely because you, you can publish some useless paper, and uh, most papers are pretty useless. Um, you know. We have a few. Don't take offense. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have, we have how many PhD papers are actually used yeah. by someone ever? Um, I mean, no, that's a good point. percentage wise, yeah. it's, not, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, so it, it could have been one of those outcomes where uh, you add some leaves to the tree of knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and that leaf is nope, it's not possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> <laughs> there goes seven years of my life. <laughs> um, so that was, so that was one one path, and I was prepared to do that, but then the internet was the internet came along, and I was like, okay, the the internet, I'm pretty sure success is one of the possible outcomes, and it seemed like I could either do a do sort of do a PhD and watch the internet happen, or I could participate and help build it in some fashion. You know, put a, you know, like I just couldn't stand the idea of, of watching it happen. Yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, so I decided to put things on hold uh, and start an internet company. And that that was kind of a we we worked on internet uh, like publishing software, yeah. maps and directions, yellow pages, kind of things. Yeah. And and we had as investors and. Um, Customers, the the media companies, so like yeah. New York Times Company, Knight Ritter, Hearst. And this was just at the early stages. I mean, this was like late it's 95. 90, 95. Oh, so yeah. it's really early stages. That's yeah. really out the gate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so then we, you know, we uh, the the reason we worked with the media companies because we knew they had money. Like there was no yeah. advertising money in 95. Right, right. Um, in fact, the idea of advertising the internet seemed like a ridiculous thing right. to people. Um, obviously, not so ridiculous anymore, but. At, at, at the time, it was it seemed like a very unlikely yeah. proposition, um, and a lot of the media companies weren't even sure that they should be online. Right. Like, what's the point of that? Yeah. And did y'all think that PayPal was just going to be a you know simple little you know internet way to, or do you think it, w it was going to turn into the major kind of transaction processing engine that it is right now? Um, yeah. I didn't expect PayPal's growth rate to be what it was. Yeah. So, and that actually created major problems. So we started PayPal on University Avenue. Oh. Yeah. Um, after the first uh, month or so of the, the website being active, we had 100,000 customers. Really? That, that fa wow, I didn't realize it was Yeah, it was nutty. Oh, wow. Um, and how did it start? How did people just even know to use it? And I mean, obviously, both buyer and seller have to be involved. Yeah. Um, well, the, we started off first by offering people $20 if they opened an account mm. um, and $20 if they referred anyone. Oh. Um, and then we dropped it to $10. And then we dropped it to five dollars. As the network got bigger and bigger, the value of the network itself exceeded any um, uh, sort of carrot that we could offer. So how much did, money did you all spend with the, that kind of five, ten, twenty dollar incentive to get that critical mass going? That was a fair amount. I think it was probably sixty or seventy million dollars. Oh wow. Okay, so it was a substantial. Yeah, was oh, okay. So, so we're not talking peanuts here. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it depends on your relative scale. Yeah. We, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's could, a peanut yeah. to Google. Yes, yeah. no, that's uh, right. That's right. Yes, yeah. peanut. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, like Google's got 50 billion, Apple's got, I don't know, 150 billion, some crazy amount of money. Wow. That's yeah. just cash. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so it's not an outland. Well, yeah, no, that's, I didn't realize. I didn't realize like that was so of core. Google's cash would be uh, $500 million, so, you, you know, so that's 0.1% of Google's cash. That's true. You're right. That's inexpensive. It's it's relative to, to them, to them <laughs> it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Well, that's right. Um, uh, and, and, and then we did a, we just did a, a bunch of things to decrease the friction because and, 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 and um, I mean it's just like bacteria in a petri dish. Yeah. Um, so the what, what you want to do is try to have one customer generate um, you know the uh, like two customers. Yeah. Okay. Or something like that. Maybe three customers ideally. And then you want that that to happen really fast. Um, and um, 
You could probably model, model it just like bacterial growth in a, in a, in a, in a petri dish, like, yeah. and, and it, it'll just ex it'll expand very quickly until it hits the side of the sides of the petri dish. And yeah, it slows down. Um, 